Before he was president-elect, Donald Trump was the king of the Big Apple. My name's Donald Trump, and I'm the largest real estate developer in New York. And 30 years ago, he bypassed the city's signature yellow taxis for this $10 million French Air Les Special helicopter. He took Barbara Walters for a ride. What do you feel like when you look at that wonderful skyline? Well, I look at that skyline, Barbara, and I really say it's the greatest in the world. I'd really like to buy everything if that were possible. <laughs> a real estate tycoon overlooking his empire, salivating at the possibilities. Nothing seemed too sacred, almost. And what about Central Park? Now, I think Donald Trump should not be allowed to touch Central Park. He's a man with few limits, never following the real estate rules. He shocked many when he negotiated a 40-year tax abatement for this hotel. People would say, how did you get 40 years? I said, because I didn't ask for 50. That was the, it was so easy. But then he erected what's now become a monument of sorts, the first building to bear his name, Trump Tower. Many call it his greatest triumph. Trump calls it home. For now, a 30,000 square foot penthouse, three levels of over-the-top decor, dripping in gold, a fountain in the living room, and ceilings painted with scenes from Greek mythology. The tile on the bathroom floor, he said, had come uh, from a mine somewhere in deepest, darkest Africa. Soon, those signature buildings began popping up all over the Big Apple, and later, across the country. Now there's even one in Istanbul, all brandishing his name, Trump. Though now, because of the things he said during his campaign, some residents of buildings that bear his name want out. That man we have found does not represent our values. Some, like broadcaster Keith Oberman, sold and moved away. I couldn't go under the sign anymore that said Trump Palace without spitting because I just, it's, and I ran out of spit. What do you think the Trump brand stands for? The epitome of luxury. If I asked you to name another condo builder, you couldn't do it. Donald Trump went all in on Atlantic City, opening several casinos, a huge gamble. Did you know anything about the gaming industry? I knew the numbers, I knew the economics. And the numbers were staggering. By the late 80s, he says his three casinos were making $15 million a week. Trump hit the jackpot by luring celebrities to the gambling mecca. Chief among them, Michael Jackson. Mike Tyson, and Hulk Hogan. Thank God Donald Trump's a Hulkamaniac! That relentless desire to win made his name a modern synonym for success and celebrity in his own right, authoring best-selling books, making cameos in movies. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. On television. Look, I'll tell you what, if you want another 50 grand, I'll cut the grass for you every Saturday. <laughs> Even commercials. We eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. If flaunting it was the game, Trump was the name. My new game is Trump the game. Because it's not whether you win or lose, it's whether you win. He continued to win not only by being a businessman, but as being a business himself. The name Trump is such a brand for success that it has been licensed on an astonishing range of products. Trump model management. What does this guy not have his name on? <laughs> the reason my real estate is successful is they know if I put the name Trump on it, it's going to be the best. But in the 90s, his fiery mix of hubris and vision caused him to win and lose fortunes. When a casino analyst made this prediction about the Trump Taj Mahal. When uh, December and January roll around, you could see business drop off 30 or 40 percent. He learned firsthand what kind of trouble challenging Trump's numbers can get you. Trump threatened to sue, and the analyst was fired. You're going to fight it to the bitter end? I always fight to the bitter end, don't I? In the end, he was forced to fold the Trump Taj Mahal casino, resulting in job losses. And his commercial airline, Trump Shuttle, grounded. I was at the highest of all pedestals, the hottest in the country. Everything I touched turned to gold. And then one day, the pedestal was knocked out from under me. Midas had lost his touch. Donald Trump's businesses filed for bankruptcy twice. He explained his financial woes to us in 1994. I had billions of dollars of debt, in excess of $5 billion. I had $975 million worth of personal debt. 
Despite the losses and two more corporate bankruptcies, Trump continued to promote a picture of profits and power. I fought back and I won. Now my company's bigger than it ever was. It's stronger than it ever was. Tim O'Brien, who wrote a biography on Trump, says his specialty wasn't building, but branding. What he essentially has been is a robust branding and marketing operation and an incredible self-promoter. He's essentially a human shingle. What do you want? Well, that's always a question I hate to answer because it's like, who I cares? I know, but I love but to. I care. I, I really understand. care. Forbes magazine says I'm worth a lot. Would I say that I'm worth $5 billion? $5 I would, billion. Dollars. I would say I'm worth more than $5 billion, but it's irrelevant. That year, Forbes estimated his worth at only $2.5 billion. But the actual number, the American public has no idea. Remember, he refused to release his tax returns. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? Maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. But back in 2004, Donald Trump took another risk, something few celebrities of his caliber had ever tried. A reality TV show about himself and the cutthroat business world, the search for his apprentice. I'm here to see Donald Trump. The risk paid huge dividends. 20 million people watched him grill young Trump wannabes in the boardroom every week. I didn't come here to make friends. Omarosa Manigault, now a senior advisor to the Donald Trump campaign, was a contestant on the show. What was your first impression the first time you saw him up close? So the first time Donald walked into the boardroom, he took one of those infamous Donald Trump for us, like... Hello, okay, folks. You know? I, <laughs> and I literally yeah. almost laughed because it was like, it was like a caricature yeah. of the person. Then you realize that's the way he is. He goes, you, what's your story? He doesn't ease into it. He was just immediately. Yeah, don't waste time. And if you did or screwed up, you heard that infamous phrase. You're fired. When we come back, we go from the boardroom to the bedroom. Donald Trump's private life. The father, the husband, the playboy. This way, Lisa. Next. Right ahead,